Testing, one, two, three, testing. Yeah, okay. Well, we got rid of the mic, so I'll just edit all that up. Uh, alright, so, hmm. This is, uh, Web Schwartz, uh, Data Live, uh, Booster Pack Case. So there's, there's 20 packs of cards in this case. Second here, we are going to make sure I'm actually in my stream view so that I have no mods. <coughs> Alright, there we go. So yeah, this is a pack of data live cards. Um, the card to the right here I actually got as a bonus card from the uh, dealer that I bought the case from. I threw it in. That is a super rare. So, I'll kind of go over this real quick, because I'm actually fairly new to this game myself. I've known about it for a number of years, and only have just gotten around to um, buying into the game, because there's nowhere local to me that sells this. So, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of okay. Just to kind of give an example here. This is a case. This is actually a, a retail display case. Um, there are 20 packs of cards here that have 8 packs apiece. It only width measures, what, 3 and a quarter inches deep? Or, th or sorry, 3 and uh, 3 quarter inches deep. So it's not a huge case. Um, there's only 8 cards to a pack. So this is a kind of beat up on the case. Um, so it measures 3 and a quarter inches, or 3 and 3 quarters inches deep by what, two and seven eighths inches wide, and uh, I don't know why I'm giving all these measurements, so somebody out there will be thrilled to know that I'm doing measurements, and just because I'm like said, that new to the game, I'm just curious about all this stuff. Uh, let's see, here we are. the measurements of the actual booster case, which as you can see is factory sealed. We'll just kind of go over some data here. Um, so this is the Date Alive uh, card expansion, or card series for Vibe Shorts, or Weeb Shorts, or Weiss Shorts, or however you may wish to pronounce that. Um, I think officially the pronunciation is Weiss Shorts. Uh, because the funny looking B is actually supposed to be a German character and these are supposed to be German words so it's supposed to mean white black which is why the words are color coded so Weib is white, Schwartz is black of course has the Japanese name there um, the English edition is kind of interesting so um, it is actually produced for the global market so like if you'll notice down here we have a Oddity, which is a 13-digit barcode, which is not used in the United States of America, where I am. Thought I was having a camera issue. There we go. Okay. Um, these cards are manufactured in Malaysia. Some of the cards are manufactured in Singapore, though. Uh, the company that produces this is called Bushi Road. Uh, this character right here is Shioko, and that is the mascot character for this card game. Uh, so this is kind of strange. Um, so yeah, as you'll notice here, Bushi Road International, PTE, whatever that means, limited. Um, and their headquarters for their English product market is in Singapore. They do have a North American headquarters, which is located in California. Why people put businesses in California, I don't know. Um, anyways, so... They're all manufactured, though, in either Sing at their Singapore print press or their Malaysia print press, uh, is my understanding of how that works. This particular one, like I said, Malaysia. All of the, uh, not all the product is licensed. So, like with Data Live, they don't own the rights to Data Live. This is a licensing agreement they have um, with Katakawa, who I believe is the rights owner for Data Live. As you can see, it does have a unique serial number. I have confirmed, interestingly enough, these booster cases 
have unique serial numbers on them. So that's kind of a, an interesting point of note for anybody out there who's collecting. Um, the uniqueness of the fact that no two cases are the same in respect to this Katakawa sticker with a serial number on it. That's kind of cool. Now, I was able to get this booster case kind of cheap um, because this card series, for whatever reason, had a reprint, which is very rare for anything in the Wipe Schwartz product category. Uh, in Japan, they get reprints a lot for a very popular series of cards, but the card game itself is more popular in Japan. Whereas here, in the, uh, for in it, not just the U.S., like I said, the, the global English market. So when we say that, we're talking Singapore, Malaysia, uh, the Southeast Asian countries where English is spoken, Australia, New Zealand, um, Great Britain, Ireland, I any any country that English is spoken, we all get the same cases. It's not like with Pokemon TCG where there is packaging variants, uh, even though the cards are identical. Um, or actually, the cards aren't even identical because I think Europe has uh, a print press, so the cards are actually marked differently for even like Pokemon TCG over there. Um, so the, the cards themselves are essentially identical except for like copyright data. Um, so, but with Wipe Shorts, you no, know, the entire global English market, everybody gets the same product, um, which makes that, which does make this kind of unique in that respect. Now, um, reason this like I was going on was a little cheaper than normal and what what's going on my computer's making noises like I disconnected something oh great no the webcam no webcam don't go away <sighs> okay well that was fun while it lasted uh give me a moment to play around with OBS and try to figure out why we just lost the webcam. Okay, all right, all right, we're we're back to trying again somehow. Okay, so like we were saying, there's um almost no possibility of an SP or an SEC card coming out of this box, but uh, all the same, I'm still pretty excited. I, I didn't have any of these except for that card that the vendor unexpectedly threw in as a bonus. So these released on, uh, what, March March 26th of this year. Um, but the strange way that uh, Bushy Road, that's the, the company that produces these cards, sells them, uh, if you don't pre-order them three months before the release date, you just don't get them usually. These had a reprint, so they're more common. Um, now this is a promo card. Every sealed case has a boot, has a promo card in it. But uh, the idea and concept behind this is is an, uh, a premium to encourage card your you know your game stores and card shops to order these and inventory these because they get to take this out and sell it by itself as a little bonus. Um, so let's see. Focus on this. Uh, this is promo card. If I'm reading the numeration right, uh, it's E102. Uh, confirmation of feelings coterie. I don't really know a lot about this. Like I said, I'm not terribly, uh, not really familiar with the Data Live series, and we've lost the webcam. Uh, no? Yes? No? Okay, good. No, we have the webcam. I, I don't know what's going on. OBS is literally the problem with the situation here. Um, something about that. So, anyhow, that's a promo card. So, technically, you have 20 packs of 8 cards. That's 160 cards plus one promo per box. So, there's 161 cards in a, in a uh, booster pack case. So we're going to open the 20 packs, starting with the pack in the front, working my way to the back. I'm doing this intentionally that way because I'm just kind of curious to uh, map out what comes out of these packs. These packs look really nice, too. 
they don't weigh a lot, but uh, they have, okay. Phone check. Lost audio there for a second. Okay, so we've cut the pack open. I'm about to pull the cards out. God, this has been. Years ago. Ooh, okay, so that's our climax comet. Uh, so cars are. The Guessing my audio is not working again because I'm not hearing myself in the self monitor. Oh, and the camera froze. Nope, nope, camera just unfroze. Oh, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, and then we've got a double rare card. And that is Koru Itsuka. Ooh, nice. Double rare in the first pack, that's not bad, right? Put the, uh, Double rare in the sleeve. Okay. So we'll take this current and uh, I'll just put this on the side like this. Okay, and that's the first pack. Okay, so we are back to using the microphone that has terrible volume. I, I literally have to hold this microphone to my lips. Yep, this, this, like, you can hear me breathe because I have to hold this, like, right at my mouth, or it just doesn't work. Um, whereas the other microphone did a slew of pre-checks over the last few days, and the equipment worked beautifully, and now when I'm actually going to stream, nothing works at all. Pack number two. Let's see what we get. Oh yes, and you're about to see the microphone. I'm going to set it down.
top card. I think we just got this one in the uh, other pack, which is fine because if I build a deck, I'll need multiples. It's exchanging conditions origami. And then we have uh, words of bravado coterie. And I think we just lost the camera again. Darn it. No, nope, no, nope, camera came back. Okay. Uh, then we have Great Interest Kurumi. That's our four common cards, so let's see what else we get. Alright, and our first uncommon is Happy Incoming Message Origami. Our second uncommon is Battle to Protect Toka. And the first rare is Swimsuit Coterie. Ooh. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but that is. So all the rare cards and above have a slightly iridescent look, or you know, kind of a hollow foil ish. That may not show up in the camera since the camera has decided only to work at 15 frames a second. And then for our climax card. Oh, we have a common climax, so that is uh, obtrusing existence. So to sleeve the rare. And hello and welcome, Kami Slayer. This has been a very problematic stream. This is only the second pack of cards I've opened because all of the crazy technical difficulties that have been going on with the new equipment, which we're not even using uh, anything other than the, the webcam, which is the webcam I got like two months ago, and it's giving me a fit. So I finally figured out if I don't change the, custom, the settings and custom resolution, it's not crashing right now, but um, my nice microphone setup I got is giving me nothing but problems. Uh, I tested it in you know OBS previously without a camera connected and it worked fine. So I'm betting if I disconnect the webcam completely, it probably works fine now too. But it's a technical difficulty I got to figure out. to open our third card pack here in a second. Get these out of the way. It's hard to hard to hold this dinky little microphone. I'm gonna set the microphone down again so you can see this crappy little microphone that I paid like a fifty cents for years ago that I'm using. That's it. This this is the um, this used to have a foam pad on it, so that you could mount this terrible microphone to the top of a CRT monitor. Yes. So that's that's what I'm using. And if you are if you don't have it like almost directly touching your lips, it doesn't pick up on anything. Okay, now, let's see. Okay. Opening pack number three. Drum roll, please. Will it be another double rare? Maybe. OK, 
Okay, so our first card uh, for the comments is Words of Bravado Coterie. Second card is Choosing a Swimsuit Yoshino. Third card is Wavering Heart Karumi. And our fourth card is Meeting Up for a Date Toka. That's our four commons. Okay, and now our first uncommon is What About This Course? Second uncommon is a Spring Moment Origami. And then we have our second rare card, which is Swimsuit Yoshino. And our Climax card is Apology from a Super Genius, and that is a Climax Common. Okay, so let's leave our rare. So these cards are basically worthless on the market right now um, because the reprint, um, this, this was a hotly anticipated ex release um, for web shorts and uh, because of the investor market, the investors forced to the purchase of this series, uh, or at least beyond what the market, the current market, was willing to go for. So, uh, Five Shorts has a very horrible, horrible market because there's like almost no um, marketing by Bushy Road for this in the English market outside of like Malaysia and Singapore, even though they officially sell the stuff in all of North America and Europe as well and other English speaking countries. So, most people don't even know these cards exist. And that's kind of sad. They'd sell really well if they had, you know, um, more market exposure. So, yeah. so I mean, people who do know about the cards, though, they, they usually buy up the bulk of the supply. The way the cards are manufactured, it's not like how Wizards of the Coast or Nintendo or, or any of the other companies that make cards um, handle this. Um, other card companies, they, they kind of pre-plan ahead, and they're like, well, we'll probably sell a million packs, okay? And they'll, you know, set up manufacturing to do a million packs, you know? Um, Bushy Road's ideology, though, is that they open up pre-orders like four months before the scheduled launch date, and they close the pre-orders one month after that and however many packs or booster cases in this case trial decks whatever have been committed for within that 30-day window is what they plan to manufacture for the global english market so if you're ordering or pre-order anything after that the prices go up because you're ordering a uh, speculative commitment from the distributor or the store or website that is offering them to you. It's really strange. Anyhow, so we're going to now open up pack number four. And I'm happy that my webcam is not crashing now that I figured out the setting apparently that uh, was causing it to crash. That should never have caused a crash to begin with. And of course, right after I say that, it freezes for like 10 seconds. Um, yeah. Okay, so our first card is 
Prompt Judgment Origami. Second card is Clone Kurumi. Interesting character. Third card is Sensing Danger Yoshino. Fourth card, this is the last common, is Under the Azure Skies Yoshino. Our first uncommon of this pack. Unexpected Meeting in Town Origami. Second uncommon is Your Choices Everyone Coterie. Ooh, let's see what we have for our rare card. And yes, our third rare card of the case is Time Eating Castle Karumi. Oh, that's an interesting looking card. And our climax card for this pack, which is a number, another double CC uh, climax common, is Special Existence. So we'll see. Time to get Castle Kurumi here in just a moment. Okay, so sleep the rear. Alright, and that's four packs down, so out of four packs so far, we're sitting at, what, three rears and one double rear. Double rear came out of, like, our very first pack. Alright, so give me a second. We're going to open this next pack. Comet is Clone Karumi. Second card is another Sensing Danger Yoshino. Remember, the, there's four commons to a pack, uh, two, two uncommons, one rare of some sort, and a climax card, which is your, your horizontal cards. We're getting to. So that's our second, our second common. Meeting up for a date, Toka. That's our third common. She's cute. Under the, s the Azure Skies, Yoshino. That's our fourth common. First uncommon. Ooh, that's an interesting looking. Strong Emotions, Toka. Second uncommon is Visiting the Sick, Yoshino. And then our rare. Yep, just another regular rare. Is Yoshino missing her Yoshinan? I have no idea what a Yoshinan is, but it's her rare. And then our climax card is with candy in one hand. That's interesting. Let's see the rare. She has a lollipop and an interesting smug look on her face. And that is a Climax Rare. It's a CR card. That's nice. So you either get a Climax Common or a Climax Rare. They don't, I don't think there's any other flavor of those, as it were. Okay. Alright, and this is pack six.
our first card is Seemingly Happy Expression Coterie. Genuinely interested in watching this anime series. I know there's a ton of video games. But I don't know anything about it. Uh, this is our second card is Shido Pinned Down. Uh oh. There's that noise again from my computer telling me that something is wrong. Check. Yes, we're good. Okay, so this was the first card of the pack right here, which was Shido pinned it down. That is the second card of the pack. Power to stop time, Kurumi. Third card, Surveillance at the Bun Shop Coterie. It's an interesting facial expression. And our... F oh, that was the fourth card. That was the fourth common. Oh, that was before Shido. I don't even remember now. It's terrible. What was the fourth? The first one. Uh... Am I wrong? Oh, no, it was the uh, seemingly happy expression coder. That was the first card of the pack. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so this is our first uncommon. This is under the Azure Skies Coterie. And this looks like a continuation of the scene with the lollipop, because the lollipop is definitely in her mouth here. And our second uncommon card is Unexpected Meeting in Town Toka. And then, ooh, we have our second double rare. It's an RR card. Mysterious Classmate Origami. Get a sleeve for that. Because I'm fully anticipating that double rares will probably be as good as we get out of this case. So I want to take care of them. There's not a lot of value with these cards. So they got to reprint. Um, the current market value for a card that's a double R is only like $3. So if that tells you anything, there's that card. Let's see if I can. To the iridescence now. Yeah. With a foil look to them. Okay. And then our climax card for this uh, pack is Delicious Date. And that is a climax common. Alright. Pack seven, people. Pack seven. Seven hold. Will it hold something really interesting? Who knows? Okay. Well, we're seeing another card that I think we've seen before, and that's Clone Kurumi. Well, she has a lot of clones, doesn't she? We're seeing yet another one. That's Sensing Danger Yoshino. Which, like I said, uh, you need duplicates, though, to build a deck. So I'm not too upset about getting duplicates. Third duplicate, meeting up for a date Toka. I don't remember... Oh yeah, Under the Azure Skies Yoshino, so another duplicate. That's our four commons. We'll try to speed up through the rest of these here. First uncommon, Visiting the Sick Yoshino, which... I think that's the second one of those we've seen. That's, again, don't mind that. Definitely saw this one already. That's Under the Azure Skies Coterie. Alright, and then our rare card. Naive and Innocent Girl Toka. Okay. Oh, I dropped a packet of sleeves. Maybe sleeves out, just leave them out, I guess. Let's just do that. Okay. Slips out the time. Put her in the sleeve. And then our climax card this is another climax common, and it is revenge for five years ago. And I think that's the second one of those we've seen. But again, you need to, you actually do need duplicate cards in a deck, so not a problem. 
I'm kind of happy to see that because they recommend uh, that you have four of some of the cards. Which I haven't built a deck yet because you're watching me open my first cards of this. I wanted to get the trial deck. The trial deck is just um, it's out of print. Mind these cards only released in March of this year, but they're sold out. They're gone. The trial decks did not get a reprint. The booster packs did, which is strange. Uh, so the trial decks are now selling for nearly as much as a case of booster packs. So may as well just buy a case of booster packs and custom build your own deck, right? card is Enjoying the Amusement Park Coterie. I think that's the first one of those we've seen. And I know that's the first time I've seen this one. And this is what, pack seven? I think this is pack seven. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's pack eight. This is pack eight. Okay, this card is having having with a single stroke Kusukabe. That's actually a pretty cool card. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another one I haven't seen before. Spirit Barrier, to Barrier Toka. This is pack spinning. This is an interesting pack now. Another one I haven't seen before. Analyst of Rata... How is that pronounced? Ratatosker. Rene. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that is a... Uh, like a Norwegian word, perhaps, or name? I don't know. But that's our fourth common. Oh. Here, you know, this, this pack's a winner, man. This, this is like... Every card so far has been something we haven't seen in the first seven packs. Uh, this is our first uncommon. It's called Basic Realizer. That's interesting. Oh, haven't seen this one before either. Draw Back in Disgust. Ooh, that's the name of this uncommon. What kind of a rare do we have here? Just a regular rare, but once again, another rare. Another card I haven't seen yet. To Save Spirit's Coterie. And a Climax card we haven't seen before. Oh, man. Okay. This pack is a winner. All eight cards in this pack were cards we didn't see in the first seven, I do believe. So that's that's impressive. So there we go. And then our Climax... Is it Climax Common? Obstructing existence. All right. So that was pack number eight. We're approaching halfway through here, and I'm I'm probably going to have to stop because I do. Unfortunately, this is taking longer because of all the technical difficulties. And I have something going on offline. <sighs> Sadly, that is other than uh, this. Let me interrupt this. So, I think after pack 10, which is halfway through the case, we will have to stop so that I can go take care of IRL stuff. Okay, so again, this is pack number nine, and we are starting off with a Questioning Gaze Coterie. I don't know if we saw this one yet. Ooh, 
I don't think we saw this one yet either. This is Date Support Yoshino. It's cute. Okay, a swimsuit, Toka. Alright, and uh, our fourth common is a Pitti Kurumi. Our first in common. So yeah, so we're seeing a lot of cards we haven't seen yet. Shido Itsuka. This is the first. Uh, he must be like the main male character in the series is all I can figure. Because he's, yeah. And there's our second uncommon is Descent of Calamity Toka. So that's another card I haven't seen before. Ooh, okay. Swimsuit card, guys. Our, what is this, our eighth rare card? Or no, our seventh rare card, because we have two double rares, right? Hang on. What? Okay! Alright, we'll actually have to stop after this pack, so I'm going to go ahead, about to, to cut this off. Uh, but that's the rare. Um... Uh, the climax common is flames which pierce through time and this is going to end the stream guys i'm sorry hopefully i'll be able to work out the technical difficulties before we continue this later on thank you for